we had originally planned to have a, a kind of discussion between the, the panel members, but uh, we, we, the, the, the subject matter is so bloody interesting, uh, as, as you understand, that it, we, we've taken a little more time than we thought. So we thought that uh, we would take the remaining time that we have available and open it up to the floor for questions and commentaries on what you've heard here today. And first, the first person I've got to give the floor to is obviously <laughs> Pan Grod, uh, Kuk. Uh, the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress was a central feature of a lot of the comments and remarks that were made here, and I think it's only fair that we give Mr. Grad a chance to respond. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, dear friends. Um, I, I won't say I won't turn this into a presentation, but I, I wanted to address some of the comments, and I first wanted to start off by by thanking the panelists and uh, and thanking the organizers for this event because I think that this kind of a discussion is a incredibly important for us as a community to have uh, and for us as a Congress which is really a, essentially an extension of the community to have and I think that a fruitful um, discussion with constructive criticism and I take all of that uh, from Dr. Harichuk, from Professor Lechuk and from everybody else is all very valuable and so let me start off by saying First off, um, I, uh, I chair uh, the national board of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, which is made up of approximately 42 board members representing national organizations, provincial councils. And it's a very large organization, a very large community to move. And uh, it's a big ship. And to move that big ship, you need some planning. And so all the comments that you're, that you're making today, uh, I, I hope that it's being recorded. And I'd like to actually uh, provide the transcripts or the recording of this session to all my board members. Because I'd like them all to hear uh, many of the valuable comments that were made from the presenters and hopefully from the audience as well. So I, I take all of this, uh, all this commentary and criticism and, uh, as constructive, and I thank you for it. Let me, let me first uh, uh, address uh, you know, what, where, where we're going as, as, a, as a Congress and as an extension of the community. And this whole debate about whether we should focus on Ukraine or not focus on Ukraine is extremely important. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll give you my, my comments on it. But let me first start off with um, uh, some of the key issues. When, 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 our, when our executive and I, myself as president took over uh, two years ago, we were saddled with uh, a number of incredibly important historical issues that first had to, had to get, get dealt with. I served on the national board for uh, under two other presidents previously, and the issues that continued to come up uh, frankly anchored our community and anchored the Congress. When I, sorry, I mean anchored, I mean uh, dragged it down. We kept dealing and putting our best minds of our community on the same issues. Dealing with the war crimes issue, dealing with Holodomor, dealing with Canada-Ukraine relations, um, and, 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 and others, and internment. And, and those issues had to get dealt with. So for the first couple of years, that's all we focused on, was dealing with those issues. And I can proudly say that thanks to the whole community and all that's been done, we've dealt with a lot of those major issues. So now we can start with looking forward. And the, one, of the big, one of the big contentious issues is, what is our community supposed to look like? And all kinds of incredible ideas were, were raised about consolidation, developing efficiencies. And I took vociferous notes on all of these things. Uh, easier said than done, but something we need to start looking towards. So what do we need to do? First of all, we need to divide up responsibilities. Because as you can tell, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress has been the, the, the lightning rod or the point of, of center that everybody keeps referring to. What is the Congress doing? What is, why isn't the Congress doing that? Well, so what, what that's telling me is that the, there is a hard, large expectation that Congress is going to do all these different things. So the first thing is dividing up responsibilities. And, and, to, and to Dr. Harichuk's point about when you look at the UCC website, the one thing I would also note is that these projects are all being done uh, in cooperation with other organizations. And in fact, one of my ma first mandates, and I saw that Congress was being constantly pushed towards dealing with issues dealing with Ukraine. And that's why uh, we've made a concerted effort to have the Canada-Ukraine Foundation take the lead role on a lot of these issues, which will then allow us to gradually push off that responsibility of whether it's dealing with H1N1 or the floods in Ukraine or the election mission. Those are all now being transitioned to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation. Uh, and that's a very important thing that we're, we're, we're I think, being successful in doing. Uh, in terms of, um, in, so th that's an example of dividing up responsibilities, and we're doing that with all of our member organizations, because the Ukrainian Canadian Congress is an organization of organizations. We try to make our member organizations stronger by ensuring that they take lead roles and we sh when we support that. Uh, we need to build a professional staff. I'm a volunteer. Lassie Hitchi, who's my vice, vice president, is a volunteer. We all have day jobs. I run a business and a family. We all, we're all very busy community activists as well. 
but we can't continue to expect the same kind of deliverables that this panel is expecting and all of you are expecting from our community if we're expecting volunteers to do it. So the next objective was, is to build a strong professional staff. And uh, we're starting, we're doing that, and we hope to make an announcement over the next couple weeks about the opening of our Ottawa office and an executive director in Ottawa. And those are some new exciting things that we need to do, but we need financial support to do that. And I'm not going to make a pitch for financing tonight, but I will. Um, we've established a strong dialogue and a relationship with the Government of Canada. And, and I think Miroslava made, that, made an excellent point about Ukraine actually being the, the, the door opener for us to, to a large extent. The fact that we have regular meetings with the Prime Minister, party leaders, uh, one of the major issues that's always discussed is the relationship with Ukraine. And the reason why is because they know that our community uh, has an interest in Ukraine. And so they want to demonstrate, the politicians want to demonstrate to their constituents that they care about Ukraine. And I hate to say it because I, I, I do agree that there is a large focus on Ukraine, but that is a large door opener for us politically in terms of our involvement with Ukraine. And one of, my, um, one of my concluding remarks, which I'll make right now, really, because I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but the, uh, the, the focus on Ukraine, it's not mutually exclusive. We can't say it's either this or that. And I think it has to be done uh, in cooperation. We need to build a strong Ukrainian-Canadian community in Canada. That's without a question, and that has to be a primary focus. But our, our relationship with Ukraine is not mutually exclusive to that. It has to be done in tandem, it has to be done in cooperation. Because with a, with a, well, Ukraine needs a strong Ukrainian-Canadian community, and you know what? We as a community need Ukraine because we need that, that cause. Uh, I hate to say it, otherwise, if we don't have that cause, we're going to dwindle away into a, a, one of these communities. Um, there are ma many examples, uh, some can cite the German community and other communities, who have become, mm, you know, ethnic at best. Uh, they don't have that lightning rod. And I think we have to make sure that we maintain a good, solid cause for, for our community. And frankly, I think Ukraine is, is one of those causes. So I don't think it's mutually exclusive, but to Dr. Harichuk's point, uh, I also agree that we can't forget, we need to build our community here as well, and we've taken steps to do that. So, Dujman Gyakuyo. Thank you, Paul.